our journey begins through this door at the intersection of thought and memory. Disembark and enter the mind. Here lies an intricate interwoven symphony of emotion, perception, and imagination, amounting to the privileged experience of consciousness. The greatest thinkers throughout history have pondered the nature of consciousness, from Gautama and Plato to Descartes and Kant. Is the mind separate from the brain or merely a byproduct? Indeed, the more we discover about the brain, the more evident it becomes to me at least that if consciousness is a symphony of cognitive faculties, then the brain is the orchestra. With around 86 billion neurons and up to one quadrillion synapse connections, the human brain contains over 400,000 kilometers of nerve fiber long enough to reach the moon. All of these connections allow the brain to fire a quintillion calculations per second, or one exaflop in computing terms. For the uninitiated, an exaflop is far beyond what the most powerful supercomputer in the world is capable of. This is the IBM-designed OLCF4, aka Summit, the fastest supercomputer in the world. Summit speed is generated by 250 refrigerator-sized cabinets, taking up over 520 square meters and weighing 340 tons. With over 200,000 processor cores and over 27,000 GPUs, Summit is capable of 200 quadrillion calculations per second, or 200 petaflops. That is over 600,000 times faster than the CPU in an iPhone X. Even with all of Summit's brute power, the human brain can still make calculations five times faster. And as crazy as it sounds, the next comparison is far more fascinating. Summit's over 73 trillion transistors generate so much heat that it requires over 15,000 liters of water a minute to keep it cool. The system as a whole consumes 13 megawatts of power. That's enough power to run 13,000 microwaves. The human brain, on the other hand, consumes just 20 watts of power less than a single light bulb. Why are computers far superior to humans at performing specific specialized tasks, but do not come close to humans regarding cognitive faculties like perception, imagination, and consciousness? And how does the brain have five times the flops as Summit while being 130,000 times more efficient? The main difference boils down to architecture. Today's computers are extraordinarily complex, yet they are based on the von Neumann architecture dating back to 1945. This architecture has four components. First is the control unit that decodes instructions and controls how data flows through the computer. Second is the arithmetic logic unit, or ALU, that processes all of the mathematical operations. The ALU and control unit together make up the central processing unit, or CPU. The third component is the main memory unit, which holds the data and instructions. And fourth is the input-output devices. One of the issues of this architecture is the von Neumann bottleneck caused by the separation of memory and processing components. You see, when a computer is performing a function, instructions are sequentially sent from the memory unit to the CPU for processing. And this is typically the part of the process that slows down a computer's throughput. And in addition to the bottleneck, the transistors in computers only have three connections. The brain's architecture, on the other hand, is massively parallel. Instead of transferring data between processing and memory, data is processed and stored in the same essential components. This is a neuron. You have the cell body, or soma, housed by dendrites that receive signals, the input if you will. Branching from the soma is the axon that transfers the signals to the dendrites of other neurons in the brain through the axon terminals. Through the dendrites and terminals, each neuron is connected to up to 1,000 other neurons compared to transistors of computers that only have three connections. And the beautiful thing is that the connections themselves are the memory, and the network of neurons function as a vast array of processors. 
wherein lies the brain's incredible efficiency. Indeed, harnessing just a fraction of what makes the brain so efficient would improve computer engineering tremendously. And that is what scientists aim to do by mimicking the neurobiological architecture of the brain via the emerging field of neuromorphic computing. This brings us to IBM's True North chip inspired by the brain. True North is a product of 16 years of research from scientists at IBM in Almeda, California, led by Dr. Dharmadra Moda. IBM received a DARPA contract in 2008 to develop a new kind of cognitive computer with architecture similar to the brain. By 2011, IBM built two prototype chips called Golden Gate and San Francisco, each containing 256 neurons, roughly the size of the nervous system of a worm. Despite the limited number of neurons, the chips were capable of simple cognitive exercises such as playing Pong and recognizing handwritten digits. By 2013, Moda's team shrunk the components of the Golden Gate chip by 15-fold and reduced the power consumption by 100-fold to create a neural synaptic core. Then they took 4,096 of these smaller, more efficient cores and they fit them together on a 64 by 64 grid, forming the True North chip equipped with 1 million neurons and 256 million synapses. The cores operate independently and in parallel with one another. Each core houses both memory and processing functions, as all of the instructions and information needed are stored locally and mimics neurons of the brain. This small section here lies the axon buffers containing 256 inputs that receive data spikes like neuron dendrites in the brain. This is the neuron block that holds 256 neurons which are individually programmed to send its output when its threshold is reached similar to neurons in the brain. Like the brain, they output our messages called spikes and indicate neuron activity. The output is sent to the routing network which sends the data to other neurons similar to axon terminals in the brain. Indeed, True North mimics the brain's architecture quite well and it also mimics its efficiency. With 5.4 billion transistors, True North is the second largest chip IBM has ever produced and yet it consumes just 73 milliwatts, which is around a thousand times less than a typical CPU. It can run full blast on an iPhone battery for a whole week. On top of all of this, True North can be tiled with other True North chips to tackle increasingly complex tasks. Here is the NS16E circuit board incorporating 16 True North chips. From the beginning, True North has proven to be incredibly proficient at machine learning applications such as image recognition. It's capable of monitoring dozens of TV video feeds at the same time and classifies 6,000 images per watt. To put this in perspective, NVIDIA's Tesla P4 GPU classifies only 160 images per watt. While this is really exciting, there is a lot of work to do in order to achieve widespread implementation. One main hurdle is computer engineers will have to learn the programming language for True North. Traditional languages such as C++ do not work because the architecture is different. But the promise of this technology comes at a time when radical research is most needed. The advancement of microchip technology as we have known it for decades is slowing and it's on the verge of ending. We now look to the brain for inspiration.